Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over element 10 in um, the Habits of Health book. So this one goes over the key role of hydration in reaching a healthy weight. And actually today I have my little pupper with me, Chico. So if you're wondering, if you're wondering what this cute fluffy thing on my lap is, it's a doggo. <laughs> okay, so I'm in a much better mood than I was the last week I recorded. Actually, funny story, what had happened, really not so funny. I, for that day in particular, I had Chipotle for my lean and green. I get uh, the Whole30 um, bowl, it's like cauliflower rice vegetables, chicken, and a little bit of guacamole. And it's usually amazing. But that day, I got food poisoning, like, badly. So literally like 10 minutes after that I filmed that video, I was super sick. I'm not even going to gross you out, but it was bad. So, uh, yeah, much, much, much better mood today. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to be going over element 10. All right, so the key role of hydration in reaching a healthy weight. Okay, so it starts off by water is a critical component of your body, making up 55 and 60% of your weight. Your body can't store water unlike fat, sadly, so you need to replenish it often. That's why drinking eight eight ounce glasses a day is a core habit of health. Water plays a key role in supporting health, particularly during weight loss, when it helps remove toxins and other unhealthy substances stored in your fat cells. Being well hydrated helps all your organs and systems function properly. In fact, every function in your body takes place in water. It's the solvent that moves nutrients, hormones, antibodies, and, other, and oxygen through your bloodstream and lymphatic system and removes waste. And of course, it's essential to your kidneys' ability to filter and eliminate metabolic byproducts and toxins. If you don't drink enough, your body is forced to recycle dirty water diminishing the efficiency of every metabolic function. Just the idea of my body having to recycle dirty water makes me want to drink water all day because that's gross. <laughs> what you may not realize is that we actually lose nearly 12 cups of water every day. Okay, I had no clue. So he says two cups through perspiration, so sweating, six cups through urine, okay, two to four through breathing, like wow, what? And nearly one cup through the soles of our feet. Like what? We're losing a cup of water, it said? Yeah, one cup of water through the soles of our feet. That's weird, like y'all, that is crazy to me. I've never heard of that in my life. Good to know. Another reason to drink water. And in high altitudes or dry environments, you lose even more so you can get dehydrated in a hurry. How much water should I drink? It is recommended that you drink eight eight ounce glasses each and every day. This should be your guide unless you have a specific medical condition that requires you to restrict your fluid intake, such as renal failure or severe congestive heart failure, or if you've recently performed intense physical activity in a hot environment, in which case you should consume an electrolyte enriched drink. Okay. During phase one of your weight loss plan, there are even more good reasons to make a conscious effort to drink your eight glasses a day. Here are a few. It's calorie free, but it helps you feel full and satisfied. It helps, keeps you from overeating. Studies have shown that when we feel hungry, 30% of our, the time our bodies are actually signaling for water. It facilitates the removal of toxins such as pesticides and preservatives from your cells. It prevents dehydration as your body eliminates excess 
salt and water from a diet of too much processed food. It minimizes or eliminates fatigue, lack of energy, headaches, and unclear thinking. It speeds up metabolism. A recent study showed that drinking two eight ounce glasses of water increased metabolic rate by 30% for 90 minutes. Wow, that's amazing. It helps your liver convert fat to energy. It compensates for the loss of glycogen stores as you lose weight. Okay, author's note. The eight eight ounce glasses is really an arbitrary number which is generally recommended to be a safe yet adequate amount. Okay. I always wondered what it was eight. We know that proper hydration is critical for long-term optimal health and well-being. It affects not just our physiology but also our ability to think and allows our mind to function at the highest level. We're going to take this very basic daily action and make sure you are building this key habit of health early on and placing it in your mason jar daily. I need to get some mason jars. As simple a task as it seems, 40% of Americans drink less than half the recommended amount of water daily according to a 2013 public statement made by White House Nutritional Policy Advisor Sam Cass. This was based on the recommended daily consumption of water of approximately 64 ounces. Because most people struggle to drink a large quantity at one time, it makes sense to do this in 8 ounce increments throughout your waking hours. In order to set this up, let's assess your, assess your current reality using our structural tension chart. So here we are back to the structural tension charts. How many ounces of water do you currently drink on average per day? Okay, so that's your current reality. Then you, it goes to the secondary choices, and then finally to the resi desired result. Okay, if your desired outcome is 64 ounces, eight glasses of eight ounces each, each a day of water, and you currently are only drinking four glasses, it is important to work out what you can do to fill that gap. So that's what the structural tension chart really is. It's just figuring out what you can actually do to fill that gap that makes it possible you know it makes something very daunting or something intimidating seem very possible just with the tiniest little baby steps these are the secondary choices you can make use the habits of health app to remind you when to drink extra water or you can just put it in your um, cell phone like I usually do that I'll put notification like timers or like alarms to um, remind me to eat my next fueling, or in this case, to remind you to drink more water. Keep a large glass of water or water bottle nearby, including at your desk or in your car for whenever you leave home. Okay, what's the best source for my eight glasses a day? Plain water is the best beverage for quenching thirst. It's cheap, calorie-free, and contains no sugar, caffeine, or other additives. Tap water should be filtered first, however, to remove chlorine and other contaminants. I honestly didn't know that there was chlorine in tap water. That's gross, but I'm not surprised. I mean, I knew it wasn't, you know, great, but I just didn't realize it actually had chlorine in it. Okay. Below is a list of healthy choices to keep yourself hydrated. Teas, both hot and iced have all kinds of health benefits, but make sure you do not add milk, which inactivates the healthy phenolic compounds and naturally don't add sugar. Green tea in particular is full of health benefits from decreasing inflammation and preventing cancers to improving your learning and memory. Studies show many benefits of coffee. Hey. Okay guys, so uh, it didn't go very well. Remember I was gonna do that whole no week, uh, a week with no coffee? Yeah, that didn't happen. I lasted about three days. Three days, that's it, three. Ugh. I couldn't do it, like, I need coffee to survive. I mean, I started getting caffeine migraines, and honestly, I just love it, like it just motivates me to face the day ahead of me and to knock everything I need to do, you know, out. 
and it's just, I don't know, I feel like I just, it's not worth going without it, you know? Um, so I think really my only solution personally would be to decrease the amount of coffee I drink, but not eliminate it completely. That's just pretty impossible for me. Not even gonna lie, I'm just gonna be honest. I need coffee. <sighs> now, I don't have a problem with maybe alternating between coffee and green tea. That's probably a decent solution for me, but just to like cut it out of my life, no, no. <laughs> okay, hey, better coffee than something else, right? Coffee's not too bad, and in fact, he goes on to say it's pretty healthy, uh, which really made me very happy to, to just hear like a medical doctor go in depth about how healthy coffee is. Okay, so he says, studies show many benefits of coffee due to its high level of antioxidants. They have proved that it decreases depression, yes, reduces the risks of some cancers, and may help you live longer. It may also slow down cognitive decline, boost mood, increase stamina, and even protect against adult diabetes. Wow. And by the way, this is the part that really shocked me. He says, and by the way, coffee and tea are not diuretics. Because I had always heard, you know, that they were diuretics. Okay, uh, coffee is a, so here's what he quotes what a lot of people say, the misconception about coffee. Coffee is a diuretic. It makes you go to the bathroom more often, so it must dehydrate you, right? Well, not so. Turns out that this idea dates back to a 1928 study, and it wasn't exactly rigorous research. Nonetheless, the results spread like wildfire, and ever since, caffeine has been considered a diuretic. Now, a recent study finds that coffee and caffeine and other drinks won't in fact cause dehydration. Yay! Because I honestly thought I was on that train too. I thought it was a diuretic, that it caused dehydration, all of that. But nope, apparently not. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, so then he lists uh, healthy hydration options. Purified water, bottled water, RO water, not sure what that is, tea, coffee, infused water, calorie free. Pick which sources of hydration you are using currently or you are going to add to make sure you're getting your 64 ounces a day. Note, don't use thirst to guide your water intake. Thirst is a late warning system of dehydration. Waiting until you're thirsty to drink means that your body has been functioning at less than optimal efficiency for several hours. Wow, so you literally have to be, I mean, it takes several hours for your body to even signal you that like you're dehydrated in the first place. That's kind of crazy. Okay, how do I know if I'm not drinking enough? If you start feeling tired, have trouble thinking, develop a headache, or notice that your urine is darker than usual. These are late stage signs that you need to drink more water. Urine should be almost colorless unless you're just, you've just taken vitamins. Oh my God. I remember when I started taking multi uh, vitamins my pee was like just about orange and I was freaking out like something is wrong with me what is this I had no idea like vitamins make your pee so dark one of the habits of disease is consuming sugary sodas fruit drinks and many sweet beverages out there with added sugar or syrups and concentrates Half of the U.S. population consumes at least one sugary drink a day, even when excluding fruit juice, diet soda, sweetened milks, and sweet tea. These sugary drinks can lead to diabetes and some forms of cancer. Each sugary drink you consume increases your risk of heart disease by almost 20%. It is estimated that 180,000 people a year lose their lives by consuming these sickening sweet elixirs. Whoa. 
The drinks on the list below not only stimulate insulin and drive glucose into the fat cells, worsening your weight issues, but will actually make it harder to stay hydrated. <laughs> Alcohol beverages also create a diuretic response and can aggravate dehydration. A good policy is if you're going to drink alcohol, match each drink with a glass of water and keep a restroom or bush in close proximity. Unhealthy hydration, so he lists out the options. Fruit juices, unhealthy, sodas, almond, coconut, flax milks. I honestly didn't know that almond milk was an unhealthy hydration choice. That's, well, I guess specifically for hydration, okay. Diet soda, energy drinks, sport drinks, alcohol. Okay, so let's in, let's conclude this chapter by adding eight times a day where we can make sure we're having a hydration break on our integrated habits of health clock. You can also use the clock to check each time you drink eight ounces or more of water to assess your current reality. As we mentioned earlier, this habit is extremely important as your body starts shifting its metabolic machinery and storage to fat to burn fat and empty your fat cells which store toxins and other undesirable products the best way to flush those from your system immediately is to make sure you are properly hydrated at all times all right guys thanks for watching um hope you enjoy the content and you get something out of all of the elements dr a goes over in the life book um, hopefully my little journey inspires you somewhat and helps you in some way. Until next time, bye!